The Book of Habakkuk, Chapter 2. There's only three chapters. <clears throat> I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also, because he transgresseth, transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his? How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee, and awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them? Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Oh, can't wait for that. Because of men's blood and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein, woe to him that coveth, coveteth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. This is just confusing. I don't know who they're talking to. It's like, what's going on? Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth the town with blood. Well, that's good. There's two things that sound... It's, this is like a wickedness versus, versus righteousness. So far, I'm just looking like, what is this even about? Okay, chapter one, I underlined, um, the wicked doth compass about the righteous. And here in chapter two, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. That's talking about the wicked. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. That's awesome, right? And woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. That's awesome. I don't know what they're talking, what, who is being spoken of. It's just, if it's, it sounds kind of like it's in general, kind of like Psalms, but this is very short. So it's not something I'm understanding right off the bat, but it's pointing out wickedness. And established a city by iniquity. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, and establisheth a city by iniquity. Behold, it is not of the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. It doesn't say every vanity. It says weary themselves for very vanity. Question. 
So, that's a strange translation. Doesn't even, okay. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. Ooh. That puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. So that's like setting somebody up, giving somebody a drink. That's true. You ever notice that? There's people who are just like, here, drink, drink. You're just like, no. Nah. Here, here, it's like, it's an, it's really an evil spirit. Like, I don't drink. Why? Why are you telling it? That's very bad. It's leading people down a road to hell, to be honest. It doesn't seem like it, but look, okay, if you're kids, it's like it's one thing. If you're starting to drink, it's already bad enough. Like, it's like when you're an adult, you're in your 50s, and you're like, here, have a drink. No, I don't drink. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy bottle to him. Why? Well, look what it says. Makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look at their nakedness. Just pervert it to give somebody alcohol. Thou art filled with shame for glory, drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of beasts, which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land uh, of the city, and of all that dwell therein, which profiteth the graven image that the marker thereof hath graven it, the molten image and the teacher of lies, that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake, to the dumb stone, Arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. Chapter 3. So far to me, this is complaining about uh, wickedness, virtuous righteousness, and just their actions. Okay, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet unto... Shagayanoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. God came from Taman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Salah. Okay, here we go with that thing again. Salah. It's all over Psalms. I never even looked up what it means yet. But I haven't heard that since Psalms. Maybe once. Once, one other time since Psalms. I've, it's in here. But it was saying this at the end of the verses. And it's like maybe it means amen. I don't know. His glory covered the heavens. In fact, right, this, the these previous Verses, it, they may be sung. Maybe Salah is like a thing to say, like end of the singing phrase. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shigayanoth. Oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known. In wrath remember mercy. God came from Taman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. So, uh, kind of rhymes. Yep, Taman and Paran. 
At least those two words ain't changed. Maybe that's what it is. It's supposed to be musical because those two words, right? His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand and there was hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. This guy's really having a vision. This sounds pretty true. This sounds like exactly what happened. Right, let's go back to Genesis. And then we heard that whole part in Isaiah about the measuring, right? Or is that Jeremiah or both? I love when you're talking about measuring. And now, <sighs> right? Genesis chapter 1 In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, right? So this sounds like it fits right in, right? Verse six, he stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. Sounds like Genesis, right? Like it could be right there in that first chapter. So that's pretty believable. I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea that thou didst ride upon thy horses and thy chariots of salvation? Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes. Even thy word, Salah, there you go then. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. The mountains saw thee and they trembled and overflowing of the water passed by the deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation at the light of thine arrows they went and at the shining of the glittering spear Thou didst march through the land in, ind in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Thou wentest forth with the salvation of thy people. Even at the cough. That did strike you with his slaves, the. Wait. Thou wentest forth of the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. No. Let me go back to nine. Thy bow is made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes. Even thy word, Salah, thou didst cleave. The earth with rivers, the mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. I like that, right? He created the mountains, and then they saw him, and they trembled. It talks a lot about mountains melting and stuff like that in the Bible, but this is a good one. The mountains saw thee and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice. So, the oceans 
the tunes, the tomes, have a voice and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear, thou didst march through the land in indignation, thou didst thresh the heathen in anger, thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. And that goes right back to um, Genesis, right? Is it Genesis? He will uh, wound the head and he will strike and the other will strike the heel, right? And it's God wounding um, the head of the serpent seed, right? And uh, the devil striking the heel, right? So there's a lot. Of, okay, this is just all coming out at once. I have not read this, so. <clears throat> this chapter in particular, three, is confirming like Genesis. And is probably why this is put in here. This is very strong. It's talking about he stood and measured the earth. It's talking about the mountains. Um, saw the him and they trembled. And then it's talking about this last one. This is very serious. Um, thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. So that's a direct, they're directly, that's talking about Satan. And that's the seed of Satan. Let's find out where it says that. Is it like right in the first? It's definitely, it's in Genesis, right? He will, he wounded the head and um, it's like Satan wound the heel. And then we hear that. Throughout the Bible. Okay, I, I, I can't possibly find that right now. Because I wasn't even underlining that much stuff in the beginning. Okay, thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation unto the neck. Salah. Okay. You know... They keep, this is, they've said Salah th three times so far. This is chapter three. And there are three clear indications of confirming information that's already in other books. And that is that he's measuring the earth. He's talking about measurements, right? Talking about the mountains saw thee and they trembled. That is an ongoing theme in, we read that in a few times. And thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundations unto the neck. Salah. It, the way this is composed, and I'm not even at the end. Um, it's, it's coming across like this is absolutely somehow some oral tradition. This is screams oral tradition. And I think this Salah thing um, is particular to an ending of a song. And so all those psalms that we read, and this word keeps going on and on. It's like in every psalm nearly, right? More than once, right? Salah, Salah. It's like, what does it even mean, right? And I didn't even really look it up. And now, look what the Holy Spirit just laid down. This, I feel, this must pretty much be such a strong oral tradition. Like, this was one thing. Like, everybody knew. And they're like, well, where is this from? And then at some point, they're like, oh, oh my gosh, it's written down right here. It's written down in the book of Habakkuk. Like, you know, hundreds of years later, maybe just thousands of years later, even possibly and they had had this oral, this in particular, it might be just chapter three. 
and maybe they just found like one and two attached to three when they found it because three to me is showing this is an oral tradition they're using this salah this should have been a, a song because nobody had books nobody had internet that people were the only way they have is through oral passing down and the best way to do that is through a song because it's easy way easier to remember and it's a natural thing that people do not any longer do but I mean yeah I guess they do in certain places but it's not not we've known done that in America for a long time like maybe they would make songs and that's why we like the songs he's a yankee doodle dandy right and stuff like it's based on so it's actually a, a, a historical song but this sounds to me this sticks out like a red flag right because i'm like okay i don't really know what chapter one is doing i don't really know about chapter two it, it's clear that they're talking about wickedness, but what's really going on, right? I think, and this is only the first time I read it, I can't even analyze it that well. It's just immediate analyzation. But this chapter three, it is screaming out. The, this whole part that I just read up to 13, and I can't wait to read like the three more last verses. This whole part was a complete oral tradition. And it has these indications, the, the Salah and the three hard facts. And this is one of the hardest facts in the Bible that he will wound the head and the other one will wound the heel, right? And I'm not even saying it right, but it's a, it's an extremely important concept. And there it is right there. So again, the first one measuring, because that's what it's all about. And we've heard about the measuring. And it's a really beautiful, that is a huge, beautiful concept, right? He stood and measured the earth, right? What's he going to do to you, right? I mean, that, that's just a, it's kind of clear talking about measuring the earth. And then talking about um, the mountains and how they reacted to him and, he, and all the waters reacted to him. You know, like they're, li they're like living beings. They're not. Um, immovable, like they're created by him. They react to him, to God, right? And then this third thing is unmistakable. So I believe that this third book of Habakkuk up to at least 13 and the ending is Salah, is the third one in 13 verses. This is a strong oral tradition that people have been doing for years and years and years. And then one day somebody found the book and they're like, oh my gosh, it's the thing that we've been saying. And what they were pointing out there is the measuring. They're pointing out the, 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 the nature bows down to him, listens to him. They tremble to him. They obey him. They, they may look like they're just sitting there and the water may look like it's just, but it's, it listens to God. And then talking about this, the head wound, that's just, I can't imagine that that's not what happened. Let's go to 14. God did strike through with his staves, the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Oh God, that is so wild. That's what they do today it's getting bad I think that part that's I think that's why that above that it stopped the oral tradition now it's just getting cruel talking about cruelty of the wicked that's really bad right their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly that is oh my god Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters. When I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. 
When he cometh up to the people, he will invade them with, tr with his troops. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. So, I'm not even going to go here. This video is already way too long. But, you know, you can get... This is only three chapters, but... It all came to me suddenly here. It's this last one. It doesn't matter if I'm not really... I, I understand it this way, and um, that's how I'm remember it. But look, now it's talking about vines, right? This is a whole nother level. I can't even talk about it, right? But that's another study, right? The labor of the olive shall fail, and the the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places, to the chief singer on my sing my stringed instruments. Yeah, they just proved it. Look, that's some singer. Habakkuk was, uh, Habakkuk was a singer. And that's why it says that uh, Salah stuff. And that's why that's why everybody kept this oral tradition because he was successful. It, it, like, he, this guy loved God, whoever he was, right? He doesn't talk, say anything about this guy. But he would take his stuff and make stuff to praise God. And he got popular, like, you know, to the point where everybody was singing his song. And then probably what happened is uh, hundreds or thousands of years later, Everybody in many places knew this particular chapter three story and they sang it. It's a song. We just found out the very last chapter. The Lord is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on thy stringing on my, see my, my. To the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Yeah, he's a singer. Let's get to know. I'm like, what is this about? It's kind of fun when you just read it like that because you feel like, wow, the Holy Spirit is really helping you when you figure that out. I want to get through this. I want to get new, the New Testament. There's only Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah. And we have three prophets. And we're done. It's amazing. 